So here's how I found out that I had lymphoma. Hello guys, I am back, finally. I know that I said I was going to do a weekly teaching vlog, but let me tell you, teaching is a lot more time consuming than I had originally anticipated. However, this first video back is not gonna be a teaching vlog. We are currently in winter break and I don't really have very much to vlog about, but I will start vlogging more about teaching uh, once we get back into school. For this video, what I wanted to talk about instead, as you know from the title, is how I was diagnosed with stage 4 lymphoma. I didn't originally want to do too many videos cancer related just because, I don't know, I guess it's kind of a part of my life that I just want to like almost pretend didn't really happen, but it did and I want this channel to be about helping people living happy and healthy lives no matter what you're going through. So I think it's about time that I talk about this a little bit more. Okay, so let's go all the way back to the beginning. In 2016, kind of around December, I think, I started feeling bumps on the back of my head and it kind of just started as like one big bump, but then I started getting more and more. And of course I was concerned, but I was also just about to graduate with my undergraduate. And I had this inkling that this wasn't going to be an easy treatment and it might potentially take me away from being able to graduate, which is really ridiculous if you think about it because if it was life-threatening, which it was, it doesn't really matter if you get your bachelor's degree if you're not alive to use it. So I probably should have gotten it checked out then, but I was being stubborn. I didn't tell anybody about it because I didn't want anything to stop me from getting my bachelor's degree. So in the spring of 2017, I finally got my bachelor's degree and decided, okay, I probably should go get these bumps checked out because at this point I had a lot of bumps. I even started getting one in my cheek that was actually getting kind of painful because it was like pushing on my TMJ. So I decided, okay, I finished my degree. It's time for me to go to the doctors. I even did a video back then about the fertility method where I had mentioned that I had just gotten a biopsy. Please just ignore this hair thing that's going on right here. Um, I actually had minor surgery yesterday. The reason that I got minor surgery is because I've been having this medical issue um, that's kind of unknown right now. They just took out one of my lymph nodes by Behind my ear and uh, they're doing a biopsy on it so hopefully in the next week or so we'll have some results notice my straight hair I'll do another video about that because I think that's a whole video on its own. <laughs> okay, so when I first went to the doctors, um, they just kind of felt around and decided that it was probably a cyst. She wanted to give me antibiotics just in case. Let me, okay, I'm gonna try to not make this a rant, but let me just tell you something. I hate it. Hate it, hate it, hate it, hate it when doctors give you antibiotics just in case. I mean, excuse me, has nobody heard of antibiotic resistance? Like, no, I will only take antibiotics if you tell me that I specifically need something that requires antibiotics. In fact, I had to refuse antibiotics from three different doctors before this whole thing was over. It was, anyways, okay, rant over. I could do a whole separate video on that if you would like. Not sure anybody wants to hear my ranting, but hey, if you do, let me know in the comments. <laughs> Anyways, from doing my own research, I realized it probably wasn't a cyst because I had so many bumps on the back of my head and I knew that that wasn't really common with cysts. Normally, if you have one, you have like one or two, but not like five to seven. And I think at this point, I might've actually had eight different bumps on the back of my head, but don't quote me on that number. So when I pointed out, yeah, I don't think it's a cyst because I have so many bumps, she goes, well, okay, you can do an MRI if you would like to, but she gave me that choice because of course all of that radiation it could be really bad for my body I'm not gonna lie I was this close to saying no to the MRI but thank God that I decided to do that MRI because when it came back it turned out that I actually had pretty much every single lymph node from my head under my chin into my cheek I don't think there was any in my chest but there was some in my abdomen and yeah I think that's where everything was. Ooh, I lied. Actually, I think there was some in my pelvic region as well. Point is, at this point, the doctor's like, okay, well, that's actually pretty concerning. But of course, they're not gonna try and be like, you definitely have cancer unless you know for sure. So they tried telling me like, oh, it could be a virus. It could be something else. Um, let's not jump to any sort of conclusion. Professionally, that's the right thing to do. You definitely don't wanna jump to conclusions, but of course, emotionally, I had already jumped to that conclusion. I figured if I had some sort of a virus that was making all of my lymph nodes that swollen, I would probably feel sick and I didn't. I didn't feel anything at all, which is actually a little bit abnormal for lymphoma. Usually you do kind of feel more tired or just kind of under the weather, but I didn't feel anything. No symptoms whatsoever. The only thing that I felt 
were those physical bumps. So the doctor decided that we needed to do a biopsy on one of the lymph nodes. And in that video you saw they took a little piece out of the back of my ear and they did a biopsy on it. So here's how I found out that I had lymphoma. Right after I had graduated, I had just gotten my first real job and I had been working there for two days. And I got a phone call from my oncologist at the time. I ended up switching late and she let me know over the phone while I was at work. I don't know what the protocol is for this kind of information. Um, part of me is really glad that I got the information as soon as possible. But at the same time, I feel like that might have been a better face-to-face -face conversation, or at least not a call that I wanted to get while I was at my new job. Since the scan showed that I had those lymph nodes swollen all the way from my head and down into my pelvis, that meant that I was in stage four of lymphoma. Don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure that the stages essentially mean stage one is like one small localized area. I think stage two is like the same localized area, but larger. I have no idea what three is, but four essentially means that they're in different parts of the body, like passing the, I don't know, some line on the body. I don't know, you gotta look it up. But anyways, point it was all over the place. Fortunately with lymphoma, that's actually a lot less scary than it would be if you had like stage four breast cancer because lymphoma is a cancer of your lymph nodes and your lymph nodes are all over your body and they're all connected. It's actually really easy for cancer to move from one place to another. So yes, I did have stage four lymphoma, um, but fortunately the doctors assured me that that didn't necessarily mean it was really any worse than any other stage. Fortunately, everybody there was super understanding and they let me go home because I was obviously pretty devastated. But the funny thing is that I wasn't necessarily devastated about the fact that I had lymphoma. Because remember, at this point, I had pretty much come to that conclusion already. And so I started looking into the survival rates of lymphoma. And fortunately, if there is a right time to have cancer. 2017 was that time because there were a lot of medications, chemotherapy drugs, so maybe not like the best for your body per se, but there were definitely a lot of ways of treating lymphoma and they had a really, really high success rate. So I actually wasn't really upset. Well, I can't say I wasn't upset. I would say I wasn't concerned for my life when she told me that I had lymphoma. The part that was the most devastating for me is that she told me that the chemotherapy I was going to be on was gonna cause me to be infertile. Now, if you know anything about me, you know that I have wanted to be a mom since I was 13. <laughs> And I'm very proud of myself for not being a mom yet because I was never in the right situation. But I was just told over the phone at my new job that I may never get to be a mom. Whew, okay. Try not to get emotional about it. But that was what I was devastated about. So I tried holding it together for my new job. Couldn't. Fortunately, they let me go home. And I spent the entire day just letting everybody know what the diagnosis was. But that's not where the story ends. So at this point, I know I have lymphoma. We just need to figure out what type of lymphoma. So we ended up doing a bone marrow biopsy, which I guess I don't really know how the procedure works because I was face down, but essentially they kind of put this like corkscrew thing and they did it in my hip bone, like in the back of my hip, and they just like corkscrew a chunk out of your bone. And I guess the idea is they're trying to get your bone marrow so that they can do um, a biopsy on that. I found out not quick enough that I am allergic to morphine because they prescribed me morphine for this procedure because it is extremely, extremely painful. Fortunately, I actually didn't feel much pain. It ended up just being a lot of pressure, so the morphine worked, but a lot of it was because I was focusing so hard on not throwing up while they were doing the procedure because I was so incredibly nauseous. And they're like, oh yeah, that's a symptom of the morphine, but we found out later, which I'll tell you about that, that I'm actually allergic to morphine. So after the bone marrow biopsy came back, it turned out that I have what's called follicular lymphoma. Now, fortunately, follicular lymphoma is actually not a very aggressive type of lymphoma, and the chemotherapy that you need to treat it is also not very aggressive. And the oncologist at the time told me that I probably wasn't even gonna lose my hair, which was really exciting because of course I was concerned about that. But then they had a suspicion that I might have another type of lymphoma on top of the follicular lymphoma. So they wanted to do a second bone marrow biopsy. After giving me morphine for the second time and me struggling super hard not to throw up, they realized I'm allergic to morphine. So at this point in the story is where things start to get really interesting because I 
think right after my second bone marrow biopsy is when my now fiance and at that time just friend and I went out to see a movie which ended up turning into our first date. <laughs> and I'm gonna do a video about that as well because I think it'd be cute to share a love story, you know? But anyways, once the second bone marrow biopsy came back, it turned out that I also had diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, which is a lot more aggressive, required a lot more aggressive chemotherapy and meant that I was in fact gonna lose my hair. And not only was I going to lose my hair, but my immune system was going to be so incredibly low that I pretty much couldn't go out into public. After doing blood tests, we also found out that my blood platelets, which are like the clotting factor of your blood, were rapidly declining. Um, I looked at the numbers and at the rate that it was going down, if it continued at that same rate, I would have been at a point where my blood platelet count would have been so low, I would have been at risk of internally bleeding and potentially bleeding out in about a month. So really quickly after that diagnosis, I started chemotherapy and going through that chemotherapy was a pretty interesting experience as well, especially because again, I kind of started this new relationship right before I started chemotherapy. I'll go ahead and link right up here a little Q&A that I did about my chemo experience. And if you have any other questions that you'd like me to answer, go ahead and comment them down below and I'll go ahead and do another Q&A if there's enough questions. And I would really like to share my experience going through chemo if that's something you guys are interested in as well. Like I said, it is kind of an interesting story because I did start a relationship right around that time. So yeah, if you're interested, you can actually let me know by giving this video a thumbs up and making sure to comment below any of the questions that you have so I know what to answer for my next Q&A. It's also really important that you hit subscribe and the little bell notification so that that way you're notified the next time that I decide to post a video about stage four lymphoma. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.